Hey everyone, my name is Benj Heisch and I am a wedding and elopement photographer based in the Pacific Northwest. And today we're talking about the camera that is my favorite bring everywhere, do everything and make it look amazing in the process camera. And that is the amazing Leica M6. Amongst you know film photography nerds and stuff like that, the M6 um, for me as well was sort of just like the holy grail camera for such a long time for me. It sort of pairs and mixes the amazing classic designs of the early Leica M2 and the Leica M3 and that kind of setup with some more modern functions like uh, simple things like a light meter, um, which is the thing that kind of like propels this camera to uh, a more usable status amongst most people for a lot of the work that they're doing. It's probably also the most popular Leica camera in that way, seeing that it is the kind of simple classic styling um, and it's also the most inexpensive M mount camera that has a light meter that has that classic styling. I'm looking at you like M5. Now, I wouldn't say this camera is uh, affordable by any means, being that it is, um, you know, $2,000 plus right now in most cases, even for the classic version. But for the kind of other options that you might be looking at in the MP or M7 category, um, this definitely kind of hits that sweet spot in between the other M2, M3 versions, and then those kind of like upper realm Leicas that also have meters and extra features like that. Now, some of the obvious reasons for getting kind of into the Leica system are the compact size, the incredible lenses, um, and the overall form factor of just having such a small, tiny, tiny thing uh, that really puts out just amazing image quality. So if you're liking this video, I have a ton of other content like this. So please consider subscribing. It definitely helps to kind of move the channel forward. Liking this video will help push it out to more people and commenting and sort of engaging in the community uh, is another way that is super helpful for me to be able to uh, see a lot of value in this and hopefully post more videos. So as someone that does a ton of elopements and traveling and hiking and stuff like that, being able to kind of carry around such a small camera like this that puts out such a amazing image and you know, finding little lenses like this little Voigtlander uh, 28 F2, being able to just have a full kit right here to travel with, uh, with a 50 and a 28 is really kind of the perfect little setup um, to give yourself some variety. You're getting fast lenses, low light, um, the ease of use of having a meter in here. Um, this also has kind of like the rapid quick load system, um, making it a little bit faster to change film instead of pulling out the little spools like you have to do in the M2. There's just a lot of things about the M6 that make it quite a perfect buy for a Leica enthusiast. So we've talked a ton about the light meter sort of being the biggest impetus for most people in getting this camera. And the thing about that is the meter is great and accurate and everything like that. And it's sort of a center weighted meter, meaning that you know the middle of the frame is kind of like what it's pulling the information from, which is really helpful. But then it's only sort of just giving you two sort of line indicators um, and trying to tell you like which way you should be changing your, your speed, um, which is the most basic way possible. Um, it's fine and everything like that, but uh, you'd think that for such a you know expensive camera, obviously it's a tiny little viewfinder, but it's, it does seem sort of silly to me that um, the only thing you get is those tiny itsy bits, the little things telling you whether or not to move your exposure one way or the other, but you know what, it does the job. So I also have it the M6 Classic as it's sort of been deemed, um, which means it is an older version and then it also has a smaller little shutter speed dial here. It's a little bit different and it also kind of goes in the opposite direction that the newer TTL version has. Uh, totally fine for me, I don't use the TTL flash metering, all of my 
flashes are all manual anyway, so it doesn't really matter to me much. Um, but if you are using a lot of flash and want your flash to be able to actually, you know, do some auto settings for you and figure out what that kind of stuff is gonna be instead of you setting it manually, uh, that might be something to consider. A few other mods that were sort of done to this camera before me, but are things that I would have done as well. Normally this Leica M6 um, engraving here would have white paint in it, so it says Leica M6 a little bit more prominently. Uh, the dot here is normally a red dot, which has been changed out to a black dot, as you can sort of tell. Actually, I look, I am, this entire frame is matching <laughs> this camera. That's kind of amazing with the hat and then the black and then the thing, wow. Uh, on brand, but I really do sort of uh, appreciate the more minimal aspect of it. There's less things to kind of draw uh, a subject's attention to, which means that there's less things that they're gonna be worried about when, um, you know, you're trying to be a little bit more discreet, um, which also makes it a little bit less of like a, hey, that says Leica, people sometimes might, might know that that's a premium brand, might be a little bit less likely that someone's gonna try to steal it. I've added this strap with these Peak Design little clips here from my friends at Clever Supply Co. And if you are into camera straps, I just made a video talking about that that you can check out as well. And then the other thing that I never really liked about the M6 was the shutter advance lever. It's got this weird little plastic tip on it and was kind of weird. So when I came across this one that had all this kind of stuff blacked out and then the previous owner had already changed the film advance out to the more classic one on the M2, the M3, um, and I believe like the MP also has it as well. Um, it was just kind of like a welcome thing for me. I really do enjoy this older style one uh, a lot more than the plasticky one from the original M6. And as we're getting into kind of like random things in that same vein, another thing that Leica nerds are gonna be mad about is just the difference between the material that this camera is made out of instead of the normal brass um, that a lot of the more classic and the more premium in terms of like the MP and the MA and um, all these other ones are made of brass. This one's made of a different material. I don't even remember which one. It doesn't really matter to me. Uh, it just wears different and there's not a lot of brassing in here um, in comparison. Some people just love that kind of like vintagey feel. Um, it's not painted. It's just like a, kind of like a really nice matte surface. Um, doesn't bother me one bit. Uh, I really like it and I have no issues there. The other kind of cool thing about this uh, M6 sort of series is that there were three viewfinder magnifications. There was the 0.58 for people who want a more wide field of view. Um, if you're shooting a ton of like 28 millimeter um, and you don't want to shove it up to your face as tight if you're someone that wears glasses or something like that, um, that kind of helps it. Has, it's a wider field. The classic kind of typical one is the 0.72, which is the one that comes in this one and is just the most popular across the board. Um, and then the 0.85, which is sort of like bringing back to the M3 version, which is really great for like the 50 millimeter, the 75 mil, the 90 mil. Um, it's more and more the telephoto. And correct me if I'm wrong, I don't think that those were actually even available in this uh, kind of as deemed classic version. Uh, they came out and they were a little bit newer. So if you're getting into a, um, you know, 0.58 or a 0.85, um, those are gonna be kind of like more modern cameras, I'm assuming with that TTL version. Now I can talk for days about just this whole process and everything like that, but um, being able to just have a rangefinder camera that has a built-in meter um, is something that I really, really love. Obviously, I shoot all of my professional work on these Leica rangefinders anyway, so I'm very, very used to the system. I, I have plenty of lenses that I either have reviewed already or will be reviewing. I also have a video on my M2 that you can check out or a video on the Leica M240. Um, tons of stuff. I'm definitely a Leica kind of nerd fanboy uh, about this kind of stuff, but just having a rangefinder in a small, super compact form factor um, that just looks amazing, um, looks and feels obviously incredibly premium, um, is built really to last forever and ever and ever. There's just a lot that goes into having such a quality piece of gear that, um, yeah, it's just something that I'm 
inspired to pick up every day, inspired to use. Um, it's a little bit more clunky, but again, that rangefinder setup that I've talked about before is something that makes me more deliberate uh, about my images. It kind of becomes another part of me in that I have to make all the different decisions. Uh, the camera, the only thing it's really doing for me is reading the light, and then I'm still deciding how I'm going to interpret that meter reading, um, you know, as, as I'm photographing. And then, you know, I'm picking the shutter speeds, I'm picking the aperture, I'm going through, um, and I'm manually focusing everything in here because of the way that the rangefinder system works. Um, it really, really engages my brain in a way that makes sense for me. Um, I know a lot of people that hate using rangefinders, but I just find that the way that I do photography, it really, really works well. Um, both for just personal work and professional work. This has been a companion for me on almost every wedding that I've shot with it since I bought it a couple years ago. And before that, the Leica M2 was on my body all the time. So I found that this just is a really good partner, obviously, to the M240s that I have as well and has worked really, really well in kind of like combining my film and digital work together. Another thing that I really love about this is the fact that it, yes, does have a battery that is used to power the meter, but it is a fully mechanical camera. So if this battery does end up dying on me, it basically just turns this camera into a Leica M2, and then I can just continue to use that um, by either guessing my exposures or using an external meter or something until I can get this back. And so that is kind of like one of the kind of bonus features about this in comparison to the Leica M7 that has a electronic shutter um, is that it's not dependent on that. So, you know, if you run out of batteries, you're still gonna be able to use the breadth of this camera. Um, and I know some friends that have forgot to use their battery for years and can still use them on a daily basis. So thanks so much for watching. If you enjoyed this, please give it a like. Uh, subscribe if you aren't already. Um, leave a comment. All that stuff really does kind of help push this channel forward, allow me to do more videos. Um, and hopefully that will mean more and more stuff uh, to come in the future. If you have any questions about this camera or uh, how I use it or anything like that, please leave a comment below. I will try to get to all the comments. And then if you want to learn more about how I just go about photographing and kind of the how and mindset behind how I make my work, uh, I have a Patreon channel that I'm really excited about where I post multiple videos a month um, and really engage in that community there. Um, it's 10 bucks a month, pretty mellow, pretty easy to jump in there and learn a ton of stuff. You also, as soon as you join, you have access to the entire back catalog of every other video I've made since that uh, particular channel started. So thanks again, we'll see you on the next one.